Um, I've got, I've got, I think that, I think Pebble Beach is going to be one of the best events of the year. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you on that. That's one of my predictions is that this event is going to be, we're going to, we're going to be, do, get done with that event. The new format with, with like 70 players, no, no celebrities on, on the weekend. And we're going to be like, why, why was this event this way for the last 30 years? Well, I mean, you know, you, I remember, so when we did the 2019 U.S. Open at Pebble Beach, uh, one of my bosses at the time at Fox was not a big golfer. And I remember Saturday night, we faxed it and I got done in our booth and our booth was right by the beach club right there, yeah. you know, on, uh, on I remember like, stopping by. Yeah. 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 So, you know, it's right there by <laughs> four. And, um, we walked in, there was like a little bit of a get together and this boss came up to me and he was like, Hey man, you know, you guys did a great job, whatever. And he goes, I got a question for you. Why don't they have the U S open at Pebble beach every year? And I was like, well, you know, it's, you know, I kind of went in. it's, you know, I knew what he was saying. Like he was, he was kind of joking. Right. But I think his point was valid. West coast primetime viewing, most beautiful golf course, arguably in the entire world. Awesome venue. I know you've got some, I know you've got some issues in terms of the way it needs to be restored, which I probably agree with most of your takes there, but even in its current, you know, rendering, it's still amazing. You know, the course, you know, the holes, yeah. you know, that front nine stretch, like golf fans, even casual golf fans know what seven is, know what eight is, know what 17 is. Know, know what, what 18, 18. is. Yeah. 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 I, mean, That's a, I mean, like how many golf courses in the world does like a, a do a lot of fans know five holes of? I would I mean, say a ten, it's Augusta, five, three, Augusta, Saint Andrews, maybe. I would say probably don't, I don't go Saint Andrews. I don't think people do. I and think it's Augusta, and maybe seventeen. Yeah, I think it's Augusta, Sawgrass, and um, Pebble Beach. Pebble Beach. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's. I mean, you 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 might have an argument from somebody about Riviera just because there's so much uniqueness in terms think... of their holes, but I don't think it probably is on the list. Yeah, I, I mean, like, I, I, it's hard for me to take a step, but I just don't think, like, a regular fan would. And I think, like, honestly, a, an event that's probably a course that's, like, building up towards that, and it's, it's like, the final four holes, but it's uh, Scottsdale. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's probably maybe the, the, the closest in terms of in the running. But, you know, I mean, th this guy says to me, you know, why don't you have a U.S. Open at Pebble every year? Well, we have an early season opportunity with the Pro-Am, and it, as you and I have known for years, and it's been a running joke on social media for years, the, the most, the most ungolfy broadcast of the year was always that Saturday at the Pro-Am because they had to infuse the celebrities into the broadcast, and you kind of failed to see what was the star, which is Pebble Beach. And now the star is back, right? It's and, like and – it's like think about that field. It, you know, the, in recent years, it's been going up against that Saudi international field. Okay, yeah, and yeah. it's just been like, what happened to Pebble Beach? It's like the, one of the worst fields on the PGA yeah. Tour. And it's like, oh, now we're going to get the very best players in the world at Pebble Beach on the weekend. I mean, that event has done a complete one eighty for diehard golf fans. It, I, I totally agree, Andy. I have a question for you. Let's say. This year is a crazy success, right? To your point, do you see in the future the potential for Cypress to get back in the Rota? Well, I think this, the limited number of, of players is the biggest draw for that potentially happening. Yeah, I think so, um, too. I'd heard some murmurs last year, like mid-summer, um, just, you know, some light murmurs. But uh, it would be epic, epic to have that. Like with modern technology, that's the thing people don't understand, Andy, is what was the last time was like in the early 90s was the last yeah. time Cyprus was a part of this. Like drones haven't been a part of a Cyprus broadcast, right? I mean, the tower camera, HD, 4K, all these things on, you know, 15, 16, 17 would, I mean, you know, you'd have that and then you could flip over to Pebble, I mean, for goodness sakes. Yeah, I mean, think about how excited Nance would be, too. Nance would, would be, just be, would he'd be, be thrown. You'd be throwing 95. Listen, nobody could speak better or, or, or would know more about a golf course in terms of a host than uh, than, than, than Jim at, at Cypress. It would be epic. Just I would be, be all in. I would be all in all day. Can we give a shout out to Jim Nance, by the way? I, I feel like he does. I feel like we underappreciate how freaking good he is at his job because we hear him so much in golf. 
He's I agree with this. Awesome. He's I mean so good at his job. Well, I think the thing that I think is amazing and I, I don't know exactly what his schedule is going to be now, but it's like the way where you can go from being the best voice on football to then like calling the NCAA final four and then just like effortlessly then shifting back to golf. Right. It's the, it's the variety. It's the ability to, to be able to talk about sports, uh, multiple sports and an extraordinarily high level that I think is, is under the radar you know, beyond just like the names, stats, knowing that, like the work that he has to put in to do that, it is the ability to pay attention. Like he, the guy has to work really hard. Oh, so, so that was my, my big takeaway working with Joe Buck when I worked with him at the, during the, the Fox golf days was how much time he'd put in to four days of a U.S. Open broadcast. I mean, you know, like months in advance, he's reading researching he had multiple researchers that were sending him information i mean this guy probably spent five months you know multiple days a week reading researching knowing everything he could about a the golf course and b the players involved it was amazing how much time he would put in for four days of, of work it was it was it, it made it made me understand that it was it needed i needed to elevate i'll say that I, I, I'm definitely, I'm not going to name names, but what I will, I will say that when you see the people that do the work, it makes the people in the broadcast industry that don't do the work. So very, very apparent, right? Um, it is, it's an interesting, um, dynamic, but like, you know, it requires, you know, people like I think Trevor Millman's done like a fantastic oh, job. He's so, he's so good. Like, but he's like, so why good. you think he's why he's good is because he's putting in the work. He know he's doing the research on the players. He's keeping up on like what's going on, right? And that's a, that's a lot of work to do, right? It's not just showing up and and reacting to golf shots on TV. It is it is being so integrated and involved in the sport. Right. Yeah, well, I mean, like Andy, just like to, to let people behind kind of the, the, you know, the window for a moment is when you're doing a broadcast, you're getting research information sent to you pretty consistently. You know, I mean, you're getting like news clips emailed to you in like a downloadable PDF or whatever. You're probably going to get, you know, like say at the Canadian Open or something, you might get 20 articles, you know, three weeks out. 25 articles, two weeks out, you know, 25, 30 articles week of you're getting a lot of information sent. It's on you to read the information, right? I mean, that's your job in, in, in a sense, but if you know the sport, you cover the sport, you follow the sport. A lot of it is the stuff you already know. So it's very easy. I'll say to not want to read it, but in the information that you're getting sent, there's a quote here or a nugget there that, and I will, I can, because I've done these jobs before. When I'm watching a broadcast, I can, I could almost guarantee you that 95% of the time, I could tell you if it's a nug nugget that's in the person's brain or if it's something handed to them, you know, if it's yeah. a card handed to them. And you can almost tell, like, are you listening to, to the No Lane Up podcast that they're doing with X, Y, and Z player, right? Are you paying attention? Are you listening to foreplay when they're interviewing or they're doing a golf segment with, Sam Burns, you know, to get something from that that you might not get from an everyday article. Like, you've got to want to do it. And I mm -hmm. think the guys that are the best are the best because they obviously are very smart and very talented, but it's almost like they really want to do the work. And I feel like Nance has just been doing this for whatever, 30-something years and still wants to wants to listen and read, you know? I had I, – I don't I... – Something a thought that crossed my mind today while I was prepping for this is that I find it a bit crazy that it's January and we and we don't know who our other golf color analyst is. Obviously, Zinger's <laughs> out. We just we, we got Kevin Kisner stepping in for yeah. two events for Seat's NBC. Empty. Yeah, it's but, very but interesting. But there's no what's what's going on. <laughs> I mean, I always you and I love to compare stuff to other sports, but I just laugh at like if if the if the Monday Night Football analyst chair was empty and, and it was like the week two, of. Weeks, two weeks before it's the, the week of it's the week of the season like 
Who's going to be there? It's like the Mass Singer. Maybe it's Mass Singer Golf Edition. You never know. I, I, that was something that, like, just while I was thinking about this next year, I kind of, like, irrationally got upset about was, like, wait, how do how do we not, like, I think, like, I, it, I don't want to put you in a spot. So this is all my thoughts. You do not have to comment. Um, but like, I think like what's happened with NBC, um, golf channel over the last like couple years, uh, has been kind of like, they have really kind of given the, the fans, the middle finger. And this is just the latest in this whole, um, kind of odyssey of, of NBC and, and what the last, you know, basically since Johnny Miller left it's been kind of, it's felt like a, a, a decline here. And it's like, we're now it's, it's January 2nd as we're recording this. And we have no clue who our golf analyst is for well, it, half the, half the events. What they have two of the four majors and, uh, and we don't know who's going to be calling, calling the main, main analysts in the broadcast booth. Right. Andy, it, it is interesting. You, you did speak on something earlier about, about, uh, Adam Scott and Justin Rose. We were talking about that 40 something golfer that had a great career, for so long it could compete and win. I mean, I think about Marco Mira in 98 and, you know, obviously he was his whole, his whole life was revitalized because he, you know, lived close to this young stud that ended up being the best golfer of all time. I wonder, I don't know. Ogilvy's name's kind of been floated around a bit. I wonder if that's the space that's going to take this position because forever it was like a 50 year old, a 52 year old, a 55 year old that got into that world on the back end of their playing career. Either they tried to play Champions Tour golf and they couldn't compete or they weren't interested in doing that, and so they got into TV. I'll be interested if that flip happens to late 30s, early 40-year-old guys moving forward that it seems like it's happening a bit in terms of like digital broadcast and ESPN+, Plus, PJ Tour Live, those types of things. But I'm wondering if we will get the superstar-level person that feels like, like – you know, Justin Rose could do that job tomorrow, right? So, like, how much longer does Justin Rose want to battle Ludwig and ADDC and, you know, the and the Cootie brothers, you know, on a week-to-week basis on the PGA Tour? You're going to make more money playing golf, but maybe life's a little less stressful if you get to sit in the booth and, and chat about it and talk about it, obviously, knowing all these guys. I mean, it's just – it feels like it's a little bit of a transition period in terms of what golf and, and – TV is going to look like kind of moving forward. Yeah. I, I think there's also like this aspect of, you know, the money, right? The, oh, I mean, the amount I mean, of money absolutely. that these guys have made is just so much different. I mean, you get somebody like Johnny Miller because they didn't make like retire, like, you know, totally live lavishly, reti- like however you want to live money when they played professional golf, they made a lot of money. I'm not trying to discount that they've, you know, but, there, there was a certain um, need to work um, to maintain a certain level of lifestyle. And it's like, now these guys, it's like, I was just looking, uh, scrolling around here at like the, what's, the most what's wins. Justin Ro- what's Justin Rowe's wor- like career money? I mean, it's got to be like 50 oh million, my God. 40 million, <laughs> 60 million. I, I mean, just on the PJ tour. Well, that's it. You know, the, the, the career money list is probably the, the place to go for this, but, but yeah, the, uh, um, you know, like that's an aspect of this and, and maybe, you know, it's always been this major, this all time great. Like you think about Faldo, you think about, um, Johnny Miller, you know, is the shift now, like, is it going to become okay if somebody didn't win a major, if they weren't a perennial top 10 player? And I think honestly, that might push the the level of um of broadcasting up because it's going to be somebody that's that wants to do the work right to, to, well i mean like like andy who's been who's been the most popular hottest topic person in sports broadcasting in the last 5 years like what's the name that comes to mind romo romo i mean it's tony romo for sure right tony romo is not a career nfl quarterback a hall of famer super bowl winner any of that, right? Tony Romo can talk ball. He knows ball. He sat there and he's played ball. We've seen him do extraordinary things on the football field. We've also seen him do not great things on the football field, especially in big moments. I mean, Tony Romo, in theory, should have broken this mold 
already. Well, I mean, they, golf, I mean, golf think about that. Should have said, well, Romo can do it in football. Like, why? Can't? I mean, think about how great Greg Olson's been. Greg Olson is, you know, Olson's great. Colt Nost is great. Smiley's been extremely interesting to listen to. Like, these are not guys that were winning major championships. You know, I mean, Colt Nost won an amateur, which I think is an incredible thing to have on your resume, right? But Colt's great on course because he knows the players. He's well-spoken. He's funny. He's entertaining. He does the work. He does the work. He does the work. Smiley's great in his position because these guys he's talking about are his buddies. If he has a question to ask Jordan Spieth, you know what he can do? He can text Jordan Spieth a question, and they can relay that. Now, that's not the only skill set needed in that position, but it's very important to have. And I would not be surprised if you continue to see Smiley move up in the ranks because of the unique place he's in in the game right now. He's young, he's well-spoken, he's good at his job, and more importantly than all that stuff, he knows all the guys because he played against them. All right, I'm going to rattle some names off. Just so you know, uh, Rose made $62 million so far. And is that just PJ Tour? Just PJ Tour. So, <laughs> so he's probably made $40 million on the on the Euro. Maybe right? not 40 Probably Maybe 20 Probably 15 I would guess. Yeah. <laughs> I don't um, even know if that's a website, by the way. Is the DP I, World Tour have official? I, well, I think it's still europeantour.com. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. I always um, laugh at that. So here, I'll let me just throw some names at you, and you tell me if you're excited about any right, of these go. in the booth. And by the way, I just want to let let everybody know this. This is not a knock on who you are. This is just us. Are we are we fired up to hear you? Are we excited? To, oh, by the way, Rose has made $30 million on the DP World Tour. Uh, oh, my God. Money. Yeah, so there you go. That's Zach, $100 million John, bucks Zach, in golf. Zach Johnson. Uh, I, I no. I mean, again, this is not a knock on who you are. This isn't anything like that. It's just simply this is a hard job. I mean, it's one person, two people in the world do this job. Yeah, for you have to occupy air for six yeah, hours. It's not at an a easy. Time. It's not an easy yeah. position. Um, DL three, we already tried. Yeah. Um, let's see, Stu Sink. I love Stu Sink, but I don't know if he he might be okay. Actually, I'm 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 like yeah, I'm like I'm like a maybe. I mean, I think he could be good. <laughs> It just again, is, is he going to my, my question to these guys? I always ask is, are you willing to be critical? Which it takes a little bit of time for these guys to get to that position. Uh, David Toms. I, I just again, I just don't think it's a position for him. <laughs> no, Brant Snedeker. Don't think it's a position for him. <laughs> um, Luke Donald. I, I think he's great. I don't think it's a position for him. Maybe I, I'm, a, I'm a maybe on Luke. I'm a maybe on Luke. All right. Uh, Rory Sabatini, you think they're going to let I mean, him actually, in the booth? Yeah, I would say this. Could, could potentially be awesome. Could be awful. Don't know. Don't think there's a, I don't think he's a 5 out of 10. I think he's either a 10 out of 10 throwing heaters like Johnny or he's got two days of the job. I'm on the career money list. Now we've entered the Ryan Moore, Ryan Palmer. Yeah. Charlie Hoffman zone. Yeah. I mean, that, but that's the problem, Andy. Like That's what you said is – is the this is the group you're going to probably have to pick from because yeah. Phil's not doing the job like like jo- like Jordan Spieth, Max I think Homa, Hunter Mahan might be that might be the guy, maybe that's the guy. Yeah, honestly, Hunter I, Mahan I mean, might I mean, be I mean, it. Let's see, he's really good on TV. He's been a re- I've really enjoyed listening to him when he's done TV. He's 41 years old. He was um, a top five player. Top five player, played on Ryder Cups, contended top ten in every major he played in um, at some point in his career, won some big events, was a, was an excellent and no and again, like knows the problem is all the guys he knows, and I'm not saying he's not friends with young guys, but all the guys he knows are probably in that group that he would in theory be competing against, right? Like that's the hard part of this, is you've got to be able to connect with a 22 year old guy that's playing tour golf, which in, which means you've got to care to try to connect with them. Um, which I think again, to your point about what we started with Trevor, Trevor is so good at that. Like Trevor goes out of his way to approach young players and talk to young players. And I once them that, to know, it, I'm not trying being, to be your best buddy, but the I, president's, I want you to, the president's cup captaincy is a big part of that too. I have to imagine, uh, right. You're, Cause it like point. forced great him point. to be out there. By right? the way, we, just, I, we, some, we somehow deviated from talking about what we're excited about in 2024, to who's going to be the next great broadcaster. Um, but I actually well, think it's a, a real great, question. I'll say this, Andy. I think it's a great thing to bring up because, like you said, this week, in theory, we don't necessarily know who's – do we know who's sitting there? Is, is Kisner. Kisner doing this week? 
Kisner could be amazing. Kisner but might like, be it's... amazing. I used our president, <laughs> President's Cup team like three years ago. <laughs> no, Andy, Andy's not going to get the job. He have a coughing fit in the booth. Um, but well, you know, the, like the the joys of having young kids. Uh, trust me, I know. My, my daughter coughed in into my mouth yesterday, directly into my <laughs> mouth as she sat in my lap, and then she was like, gave me the sweetest look, and you're like, I don't know, what am I supposed to do here? Um, <laughs> That's the yeah. the worst is when they cough and you literally feel the cough go into your mouth. You're yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah, that's yeah, a exactly. direct hit. Yeah. No, there you go. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> is, now is. My, my question, I guess, would be, you looked at career money. I guess another way I'd look at this, and I might do a little dig in tonight, is is there, like, a group of, like, Smiley where they're young and it just didn't work out? Like, the game maybe didn't work out, and is there is there anybody in that world that you feel like could be excellent at this position? Because, again – it feels like it's probably the way to go is to try to well, find somebody very young and very talented. It's just not, it's way easier said than done. I think the other crazy thing about this situation here, and this is, this is NBC golf channel's own doing. They had nobody in the pipeline, right? Like smiley's like the, the one, but it's like smiley's been doing this for two years. And right, I, I right. don't like, I just don't think like that, you can go from where he is now to being the lead chair right away. But like yeah. in maybe five years, 10 years, five years from now, he might be ready for that. Right. But like the fact that they didn't have anybody else that was even like, you know, we got somebody that's never called golf going into the booth for the first two tournaments of the year. And I think Kisner's going to be really good at it, but like, is he going to be so is, is he done playing like that right. would be my my question like um but he fits the he fits the vein of what's probably realistic of career achievements at this point that would want to do the booth job yeah. that like versus you're not getting the Nick Faldo of this year. you're not no, Brooks no. Kepka isn't going into the booth right Jordan, <laughs> Justin, Max, these guys aren't – I mean, unless they really want to do it. Max could do it. Yeah, but, but again, Andy, like like you're going to go to Max Homa and go, hey, you want to do this job, you're going to make – I've seen it in like 10, 15 years. I, I mean, maybe, but I just – like you're going to make a, a 50th or a 20th of what you made as a player, and yet you're going to have to travel the same amount. You're going to stay in worse places. You know, it's like I think it's a great – in theory, it's an awesome idea that – one of these guys would be excellent at the job, but in reality, once they see the week to week grind, how much work they got to put in, how it's not as easy as everybody thinks it is, how much travel's involved, how they've got to get there on a Tuesday for a Thursday golf tournament, you know, and fly out Sunday night or whatever the case may be. I think you were right when you said it's unrealistic to assume that Nick Faldo or Johnny Miller 2.0 is ever going to exist again in golf space in terms of broadcasting. Because if we've learned anything, it's that we're cutting money away from this stuff versus putting more money into it. And you're going to go to, you know, one of these 28, 30, 32 year old guys that are making 20 million a year go, we'll pay you a million a year to do this job. I mean, they're, they're going to be like, we make, I make a million a year, just leave my money in the bank, you know? Yeah. Um, all right. Wait, we've devolved here. I actually, I thought let's, it was, listen, let's run I thought through. It was, I thought it was a great, I thought it was a great <laughs> conversation to have. And I think it is important because I'm sure golf fans are thinking at least something similar to what you brought up is this is an important position, especially early in the season when you've got these monumental golf tournaments that are going to take over sports TV when football ends and the playoffs go away and you've kind of got, Riv floating around and you've got these great tournaments. I know Riv's a CBS property, but you know, you've got these great golf tournaments and maybe it'll be Kisner. And I, if it is, I mean, I hope he's who he is, you know, away from the mic because Kevin Kisner is extremely entertaining. He's a great listen. And he's somebody I think that could crush the job if he wants to do it.